Hi, Madeline from Sonic Bloom here. Today I want to show you some really cool tricks that you can achieve with the Impulse, which I think has been the most ignored and neglected instrument in Ableton Live since the drum rack was introduced. Because initially, after Ableton Live got MIDI, because initially it was only audio, there was only the impulse and then once the drum rack came along a lot of people just were like okay i'm gonna use the drum rack which is great but the impulse has some really nice features that you can use to get interesting sound designs and also you can use it in a drum rack just like any other instrument so i'm gonna add an empty drum rack here first and then we're going to grab the first impulse. Now we need a sound. And if you're building something from scratch, I would actually recommend that you only put something in the first slot here because that corresponds to C3. Otherwise you have to basically set the play note accordingly. So this is like C3, D3, only the white notes basically. I have a tutorial on the fastest way from impulse to drum racks if you're interested. I'm gonna link this above and in the description. So we need drum sounds, one shot. This is quite interesting, so I'm gonna drop this in here. So now we got this in here. This is great, but like we wanna set some MIDI notes here. And I'm gonna gonna select all of them and then press command or control if you're on Windows. So that get get some deviation here, as you can see, of minus 52 for the velocity, which is gonna come in handy to kind of show some things that you can achieve with it. And now we're gonna switch back to the impulse and we can play it. So this is what it sounds like initially. So the velocity is randomized a little bit. So the first thing I want to show you is that it's got time scratching and this is really cool. So we can just... And you can also have this be affected by the velocity. This is why I said this both in the positive and the negative direction. And then here you've got two modes. Mode A is better for lower sounds, or like lower frequency sounds, and B for higher frequencies. So it's always useful to kind of try things out. Even, for example, if you have a sound that is lower, mode B might still get you more interesting results when you use time stretching. And then we can add transpose to the mix as well. And you can, the transpose can be modulated by velocity and randomly as well. You could also add a little bit of saturation. Then, as we know from other devices, we also have a, a filter section. You can set the decay. If you use time stretching, I would recommend to keep the decay on the 10 seconds. Otherwise, you might want to shorten that also depending on what sample you're throwing in. Maybe you don't want to have everything playing. And here you can set the start. So I could change this as well. And then you've got panning that can be adjusted or modulated by the velocity again and random. And the volume of the individual sound slots can be affected by the velocity as well. So 
what I could do now is go back to the drum rack, add another impulse to maybe the second slot. Maybe I'll just add a couple more. And then we can go back to the drum sounds and add this to the second one. Okay, so, oops, that was not the intention. And so here we could adjust stretch again. And of course, the most interesting thing could be to, I'm just gonna add nodes randomly here. To, for example, go into record mode and just and simply record automation for stretch. I'm going to mute this one and let's have a look at this one. Or you could easily also negatively stretch it so that it's massively shortened. If you compare it. This can be useful as well, and you could combine this and then we could maybe add some notes for this first. Let's mute these. Go back. Try what mode B sounds like, even though it's a low sound. I think you get the point. So there's definitely something that you can do with that. I particularly like this with field recordings and I'm gonna showcase now a couple of my free life packs that use impulse inside of drum racks. So here I've got the demo for the SB frog drums that contains, as the name suggests, frog sounds within the drum rack and the individual drum pads contain an impulse with a sound each. And when I go into the mapping mode, you can see here that various of the sounds have the stretch factor mapped as well. And so I'm just gonna play you the last bit here. Okay, so here I've got the demo set for my SB Clicks and Pops life pack that contains a drum rack with various clicks and pop sounds that I recorded over the years. And while most of them are in simplers, the top row here are all in impulse. And I've actually mapped the transpose and stretch for those to the eight macros. And 
here you can see that I've automated this and we can just listen to a bit of that here. So as you can hear, you can easily create like glitchy sounds this way. You could also try this with other things that are not supposed to be drum sounds. Although there is a limit because the decay time has a maximum of 10 seconds. And in this life pack that's also free, there's also another beep sound that I've created an instrument rack for. So here we've got the demo set for my free Rock and Stone life pack that contains a drum rack with only impulse instances and for two of them I've mapped the stretch to macros and I've automated them as well here. So this is just box and stones that I've sampled. And last but not least, we've got the demo set here of the Match Beatbox Life Pack that contains a drum rack with just impulse instances containing sounds of matches being struck and the match box being shook and so on. And here you can see that I've mapped several of the stretch parameters to the macros as well. And I've automated two of them so we can just quickly listen to that as well. So I hope that gives you some inspiration of what you can do. And if you're interested, I'm going to link all of the free life packs below as well. Also others that I haven't showcased that contain drum racks with impulse instances as well. And you're welcome to download them all if you want. So I hope you found this useful and it's given you some inspiration. If it did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And let me know if you have any questions or comments or any suggestions of topics you'd like me to cover in the future. And I'll hopefully see you next time. Until then, bye.